it's completely changed the way that we think about and that we are able to look at science. It really does allow you to visualize something that looks like it's from another world. The scope is almost stuff of science fiction. It is what biology is for me. Biology always delivers something unexpected. We test a hypothesis, we reject the hypothesis, but what we end up thinking after we've done that experiment is probably completely different from where we thought we were gonna be by the time we finished. So it's like going down a road, you think the road has a predictable direction and you're gonna reach one destination, but then some, there's a roadblock and you take a, a left-hand turn and the next thing you know, you're at a much different destination and that destination presents a whole different set of challenges. And this microscope to me embodies that challenge in biology, which is we dare you to look down the scope, we dare you to see those images and to acknowledge how complex the biology of these apparently simple organisms is. I mean, the very first images that came from this thing, um, I, was, I was shocked. I mean, it was just, and every moment that we were uh, looking at them, we were trying to figure out what we're looking at. If you look at a lot of kind of traditional microscopy, you're looking at uh, low contrast, black and white images, all monochrome. Whereas this is something where the, the images really pop, it really shows all of these kind of unique little critters in a, in a, in a neat interacting at this amazing scale. So I think it's in some ways it's almost a, an art, but at the same time it's science. So it's kind of like the way that the Hubble Space Telescope shows us stars or planets for the first time in this amazing resolution. It's something that's very touching and very enlightening at a whole, whole new scale. So I kind of view what we're doing as almost like a little space station, but it's on Earth and it's a scientific frontier that's the ocean instead of space. So the laser scanning confocal microscope is a, an extraordinary instrument that has allowed it for us for the first time to, to visualize in three dimensions living organisms and specifically um, as applied to the type of work that I do, coral. If you're a scuba diver and you're looking at a coral out on, on the reef, you're thinking that it's, it's a colorful rock. This microscope actually enables us to do for the first time is to look at that living, active, vibrant community and understand that those colorful rocks are a whole world into themselves. This instrument is special because it's non-destructive. We are able to actually visualize the living animal. In the past, what we've been able to do is to study these processes by taking the animal and essentially fixing it at a single point in time. And then we'll take a, a, a very fine knife and we cut through the animal to reveal a section of the biology. We put that on a microscope and we look at it. What this scope allows us to do is, in essence, we're able to section through the animal using a laser that doesn't kill the animal. And so we can actually see the three-dimensional architecture of the organism. And then we can watch that architecture over time. You know, I've been a coral reef biologist for 25 years. And when I first saw the images that were acquired on this scope, it was like a brave new world of science that had opened up for us. I think none of us had anticipated how dynamic the images would be and how much corals move. Technology has really, uh, in the last decade, changed the way that we do science. When I did my dissertation, it was an eight-year project for me. Now my students, every single one of them in the lab, generate my PhD in a couple of hours. When we visualized some of our coral species, we saw some new organisms that we never knew were associated with corals. And we'd look at a particular coral species and we'd always find this little beastie. We think it's a rotifer, but we're not quite sure. And in fact, after we released some of the images of this particular organism, there was a bit of discussion in the community about is this a rotifer by the people who are experts in that area. So there's a level of discovery, I think, that's made possible by the microscope that is exciting in a variety of different perspectives.
We are all aware of the fact that we are, are there's a, a massive amount of carbon being released into the atmosphere, and in essence, that carbon dissolves into the ocean, and the ocean changes in chemistry in that it becomes more acidic. That acidity is actually counterproductive to organisms that require a particular chemistry to lay down bone for all intents and purposes. And so the more acidic the conditions become, the less able these animals are to lay down the calcium that creates structure. So what we're talking about here are the, the ramifications of climate change. This microscope is actually outfitted with a very small aquarium basically on the stage and so we can change the temperature or we can change the chemistry of, of seawater that corals are, are exposed to right there on the stage of the microscope and so we can actually look at their ability to, to lay down their, their skeletons and calcify in different conditions in real time, which has never been possible before. The unicellular algae that are packed inside of corals, they're bright red in the images. That's the way in which the light hits the chlorophyll inside of these microcellular algae. They're packed in there and they're packed but patterned. And we're looking at those patterns and trying to evaluate what those patterns really mean. Do they mean something? Do they tell us something about the basic function of the system? And when those patterns break down, does that tell us something very rapidly about the fact that something's going wrong? There are so many different aspects of working with a scope and every time we show it to somebody they say, wow, that is really fascinating, I'd love to do this with it. And it's always a project that we haven't really thought of, something unexpected and it's somebody's perspective and I think perhaps that's the thing that's so wonderful about the microscope is everybody can really see the beauty of the organism or the, the system that we work with and the capacity that the microscope brings. It, it, it brings out almost the creativity in the science you want to do with it because it, the images are so beautiful. It's taking the science that we do and it's broadening the message in such a way that people kind of, kind of can get their head around, wow, coral is not just a rock on a reef, which is what most people think. Most people think they're inanimate objects that are really just sitting there. They don't have a life. And when we show these images for the first time, people go, wow, that is totally unexpected. We had no idea they were so beautiful. And by doing that, then, we can raise awareness about the vulnerability of reefs and the need to conserve and protect them.